just watching, um, going through some, you know, YouTube videos as I always do. And I caught the Sixth Sense review, uh, from Bass Box and Outdoors. So, uh, I suggest go over, check that out. But one of the things he was mentioning in the Sixth Sense, if y'all get the Sixth Sense, Super Sax, um, Sixth Sense is one of the best lure makers on the planet. Outside of JDM, you know, I give credit where it's due. Um, but as a, as a national company here, Six Sense lures are exquisite, well-painted, well-designed, extremely well-manufactured uh, with top-notch quality materials um, and hardware. That said, they branched off to a lot of soft plastics. And Bass Boxen made mention of how he doesn't like uh, their creature bait, the Six Sense creature bait. Um, and it brought to mind something that I too have had issues, not with Six Sense in particular, uh, because um, uh, this is just a small sampling of just some of my craw creature bait profiles uh, that I hold on to, and this ain't even the half of it. But um, with every manufacturer, you're going to have different materials, different profiles. A lot of the beaver and crawl baits, you know, they're going to look the same. Um, you know, you've got your Rage Menaces. Um, you got some of these craw, you know, craw dialogue baits, standard creature baits, um, reaction innervation. Uh, this is what I'll probably use uh, to demonstrate. But I mean, Crawl patterns are crawl patterns, and sometimes you're looking for something with more action than what the bait will give you based on the appendage quantity and size, uh, the, the material they use to manufacture that particular uh, thing. Reaction Innovation, Innovation's uh, Sweet Beavers, um, this is one of the better, my opinion, the better examples of this. A Reaction Innovation Beaver is a very sturdy quality material for manufacturing, but they by far do not give you um, some of the best action. Uh, if you're looking for something with far more flutter, far more um, you know action to 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 drive those bass to attack, um, stuff like the reaction innovations is not probably your best. However, that being said. That's if you're running it on your standard, um, you know, Texas rig or Carolina rig. So I made up this little tiny miniature um, Texas rig. Uh, you know, I got my bobber stop. I've got my, I, I'm using a lightweight because I'm going to throw it in the tank. I'll show you a few photos of running on the Texas rig. And then I'll show you, I'm going to demonstrate how I rig, particularly one of these baits. That I'll use this one as the example. Um, but I rig them differently because it completely changes the way the bait will fish. So when you have this on your standard, uh, you know, Texpo's Texas rig, just rig it up real quick, um, you're going to get water to draft across the bait from, let's see if I can do this. Ooh, this is in the tournament, thank God. Um, to draft across the bait over the head of your sinker, and just flutter across these ribs, and the action in the back is just this, this even when they're split apart, you just maybe get a little tick. Um, these appendages on the outside, I've noticed with the reaction innovations, they'll draw a lot of that water current out and away, which will kill the, the action of these longer tentacles. Because 
the water's flowing across the body and getting pushed away, it's not really hitting these to swing them left or right. You'll only get the top and bottom, which will kick one up and down, but it's such a faint flutter. And I'll show you some, some video of that uh, over here in the tank. So what I do, excuse me one moment while I get the blade. All right. So what I do with these is I, I don't fix these, I don't fish these Texas rigs. I don't fish these on a Carolina rig. Um, there's far better baits that I use when I'm fishing Texas or Carolina style uh, setups. I actually do the primary uh, bait that I use for fishing a Carolina or a Texas rig bottom is actually a fluke. I use it as a bait fish profile that looks like it's feeding on the bottom. I don't use it as a crawfish. For craws, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm fishing it as a jig. If I want to fish it swimming it, I don't fish craws on a swim jig as much as I probably should. But these craw beaver um, presentations, this is how I fish them. So you're saying, oh, what's, what's, what's the difference? What's the difference? There's a craw paddle, these are two, there's your hook in there. Um, well, that might give you a little hint. And also, if you look at this bait, that might give you a hint. So here's the big difference. I fish them backwards. I fish them backwards, and I fish them with a extremely light Nico nail nail weight. Um, so what I do is I get I like Eagle Claw because they come small. So I go I go with a one thirty second ounce, one thirty seconds ounce nail weight because they are minute. And it works on, I use the same weight on regardless if it's a, a two inch, one and a half, a three inch, um, you know, soft plastic. Because I'm only using this just to drive the head of the bait downward. And there's, it also allows me, if I drive the nail directly centered, it'll dive straight. If I drive this nail weight just slightly askew, ever so slightly off which I like to do. In other words, I don't pay attention when I'm sticking in it. I just jab it in there. With that nail weight running off on a slight angle, and you can adjust this as you go, um, but what it affords me is a very enticing death spiral action to the bait. And uh, you'll see that in a second when I, uh, when I show some test tank footage of that. Um, but it gives you a death spiral in the bait so instead of it just falling straight down it will actually spiral down this also benefits me greatly as a bank fisherman in trying to get my bait out into deeper water depending on how far off your drops are from your bank um, as an angler on a boat this allows me to skip and flip this up under and deeper towards the bank under lay down trees, overhangs, uh, rock out, outcrops, you know, that, that are sitting out, hovering over the water, I can get this. And because the nail weight is on the head and I'm rigging this backwards, so instead of what you would do in a Texas rig, you'd run it through the nose of the bait, spin it around, and then rig your hip, hip, uh, hook point out the hip or back end of the bait. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to start here at the claw side, run my hook through the center there, spin it around, and find where my hook point's gonna come out towards the nose, okay? And then I'll pop it through backwards. Alrighty, I'm doing this fast, I take a little bit more care and time when I, if I was doing this you know, on the bank fishing. So now I have, again, a weedless bait, because it's still tech-sposed into that groove there. This helped, the, especially these rack innovations with these two little bumps on both sides. It lets that hook lay between that gully, which uh, helps me uh, certainly with, uh, with preventing it from getting too much muck and mire and, and grass. But still, as soon as that fish 
bite, that hook, hook point's exposed, and you've got a large gap there for your, for your uh, fish to hook up on. And I'm going to use a quick snap. Um, just for convenience. Normally, you know, you tie this to your line first, um, but that's it. So I would, I would use, uh, you know, Palomar knot, whatever your knot of choice is. I don't use Palomar knots typically, um, but, uh, but for something like this, I probably would um, run it backwards. And then when you're fishing it, it's going to actually do, when you're fishing it, it's actually going to do some interesting things. One, again, um, you're, you're running it backwards, it's going to go nose away from you. So as you throw this out, you're actually going to have a bait that'll hit the water, and instead of drawing towards you, following that weight that's on the line in the, in the head of the bait, as it drops, it's going to draw forward. Because it's fished backwards, it's going to swim away. It's going to swim away, and it's going to spiral as it goes down to attract any suspending fish to go after the bait. Two, and most importantly, now you look at the way it positions those flappers and claws. If you're yo-yoing this, if you're dragging this, if you're you know pumping this as you're uh, on your retrieve during the height of the summer when they're a lot more aggressive, um, these appendages now are going to catch water, flutter like crazy, and then as you release and let go, slack line, it's going to pin these back, and it's going to spiral back down again. So. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll throw a little, uh, little footage in the test tank, but you get basically a reaction similar to a squid or, um, you know, from saltwater angling fame. But for you at Bass Boxing Outdoors, um, I just think that is a way that you might find that that bait that has very little action on a standard Texas rig. Um, there's a, quite a few people that have thrown these in pools and have you know, challenged brand by brand by brand. And you can find a lot of these that don't have a huge amount of action. If, you, that, if that's really what you're looking for, try that method. Reversing the hook, putting a small, tiny, tiny little nail weight in the nose just to get it down there. Because obviously, you know, uh, fishing it weightless, it's, especially if a buoyant, if you have an extremely buoyant plastic, it's not going to uh, really get down there and it's not going to give you that cast away action and you won't be able to get the death spiral you'll still be able to flip it out there it'll still sink by the weight of the hook um it'll flutter a lot softer and slower if that's what you're going for fishing it weightless just the hook like this one hook and uh no nail weight um but if you put that nail weight in it's going to spiral that bait down it's going to sink that bait away and it's um it's going to in my opinion um give you what you're probably looking for out of a bait that's otherwise muted uh, with its action um, when you're fishing it. So it can give life to a lot of the MTB baits that come in your box that you, you throw and you don't get bites and you don't get bites and you look at it and you, you might take it to your bathtub or if you have a test, you know, a little fish tank like this that you can look at it and say, this thing doesn't do much of anything. It just kind of, it's there. It doesn't flutter, it doesn't sink, it just, it's there. Throw it this way, reversed, and you'll be amazed the amount of action that you're going to get out of the bait. So uh, I'll pop in a, a little short clip of uh, some of the action of the bait, how it compares, and uh, I hope this gives you a little bit of a chance of uh, what you might want to try. So as always for me to you, take it easy, tight lines, I'll catch you on the next cast. Peace, Hookaholic. But that's not by speculation. But the position that I got, I climbed too high to fall, went too hard to drop.